Hi everyone, my name is Justin, and in this tutorial I'll be showing you how to create a cross tabulation using SPSS. The data set I'll be using in this particular tutorial is Ipsos Reads 2011 Federal Election Exit Poll. To learn how to download this data set, you can visit us at lizpop.ca and watch our first tutorial on downloading data sets from the Wilfrid Laurier University X Drive. To examine the relationship between two variables, we create a crosstab. For example, let's say we wish to examine the relationship between an individual's perceptions of economic performance and their vote choice. In this particular data set, I've recoded the variable Q24A. Q24A measures whether someone thinks their personal finances will be better, worse, or the same in the future. For clarity, I've renamed this variable personal finances. In our example here, personal finances will be our independent variable. For our dependent variable, I've recoded the variable in the data set that is called decided. Decided tells us which party the respondent claims to have voted for. I've recoded this variable into a dichotomous variable, meaning it has only two categories. Either the respondent voted for the conservative party, or they did not. For convenience, I've called this recoded variable con vote. To create a crosstab using personal finances and con vote, I'll begin by clicking on Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and then Crosstabs. Once the crosstabs dialog box is opened, I'll want to select my dependent variable and place it into the rows box. In this example, our dependent variable is con vote. Next, I'll want to select my independent variable and place it into the columns box. In this example, the independent variable is personal finances. Next, I'm going to click on the cells button. If your independent variable is the column variable, as in this example, you can go ahead and click on column under the percentages area. It is possible to request more than one type of percentage in a table, but it's going to make it very difficult to read the table if you select too many percentage options. When you're finished, go ahead and click Continue, and then you can go ahead and click OK. The crosstab will open in the output file and look something like this. To test for statistical significance and measures of association for nominal and ordinal data, you'll want to go back to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and then Crosstabs. You can then go ahead and click the Statistics button. And next, to test for significance, you'll want to click on the Chi-Square box in the upper left-hand corner. And then for measures of association, first you must decide whether your variables are nominal, ordinal, or dichotomous. Dichotomous variables are also known as dummy variables and that means that they have two categories. If your independent variable is nominal, you can go ahead and choose Kramer's V. If your independent variable is ordinal, as in our example here, you can choose either tau B or tau C. Tau should only be used when both variables are measured at the ordinal level, unless one or both variables are dichotomous. Since our example has an ordinal independent variable with three categories, and a dichotomous dependent variable with two categories, we will select tau C. We would use tau B as our measure of association when our independent variable and our dependent variable have an equal number of categories. When you're finished making your selections, you can go ahead and click Continue, and then you can go ahead and click OK. Reading across the first table, we see that our chi-square has a significance value of decimal zero zero zero, which is well below the standard indicator of a significant result. Namely, it is well below our alpha of decimal zero five. Therefore, we can reject the null hypothesis that vote choice is independent from a respondent's perception of their prospective economic finances, and we can conclude that there is a statistically significant relationship between how a respondent feels about their future finances and how they vote. Next, we'll want to examine our measure of association in the table called Symmetric Measures. In particular, we want to examine the values in the value column. We see that tau C 
has a value of decimal 1, 2, 9. A value of 0 means there is no association between the categories of the independent variable and the categories of the dependent variable. Thus, in our example here, we have a statistically significant result, but with no association. Before we conclude, I'm going to show you how to add a control variable to a crosstab. To analyze the relationship between two variables with a control variable, you'll want to go back to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and then Crosstab. Once you have identified your control variable, you can go ahead and select it and put it into layer 1 of 1. In this example, I've recoded the variable HH income, which measures household income. I've collapsed the multiple income categories into two categories, those that make less than $95,000 a year and those that make $95,000 a year or more. I've renamed this recoded variable HH income underscore recoded. I can go ahead and put that into the layer one of one box. A separate output is produced for each category of the control variable. So, for example, our original relationship is now examined by comparing those that make less than $95,000 a year to those that make $95,000 a year or more. Again, you will notice that your chi-square test as well as your measure of association are broken down based on the control variables we have added. Just as we did with the original tables, we'll want to first check for significance, and next we'll want to check for association. That concludes this tutorial. If you'd like to see more of our tutorials, be sure to visit our website at lizpop.ca. Don't forget to follow us at laurierinst on Twitter. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.